Hello everyone, I'm Dan, and this evening I've been experimenting with some lighting on Roblox. But first things first, let's talk about the way that lighting is right now. You are currently looking at a happy home in Robloxia. Unfortunately, this happy home in Robloxia has a bit of a problem. You see, the direct lighting looks good enough. I mean, we've had this direct lighting thing solved for a while now. It's a relatively old problem in computer graphics. And this 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 will do right we can very accurately model whether you're in sunlight or in shadow and we can color appropriately the problem is what to do with the shadows so originally in computer graphics what we did is we used an ambient term so if we turn up the ambient property in lighting here you can see this looks a lot better the shadows aren't just pitch black now they actually still exist there's still details that we can make out there and for a long time, this worked. And this dates back to the very beginning of Roblox, even back when we had like stencil shadows, if anyone remembers that. Um, so this is pretty decent, right? This is, uh, it looks somewhat passable. But the problem is that everything gets the same treatment, regardless of where it is. So, I mean, firstly, this interior looks very monotone. And it also has the exact same lighting as outside. So inside and outside are colored exactly the same way, which makes no sense because outside is getting all of the skylight and the inside is getting some things from like a few windows. So they should be lighter and darker in real life. Roblox partially addresses this with its so-called outdoor ambient. So what Roblox does is it uses the voxel grid to calculate which parts of your map are inside and outside. I got that the wrong way around, who cares? Um, so you can see inside here it's still very dark, but outside here it's using our outdoor ambient. The really cool thing is that if we turn up the ambient here, let's just make it like red for disambiguation. So you can see in here we still have the old ambient term, but the outdoor ambient is used outside. I mean, there is a bit of a half truth. There is a little more uh, blending involved in order to make everything look complete. But that's basically how that works. Now, there is a few other more recent things like environment diffuse scale, which tries to infer this lighting from your skybox. So if I went to I don't know, Atmos and we got Canary and Coast, I'll just apply about lighting. Uh, what you can see here is that suddenly these different faces of the house have slightly different ambient lighting is of course specular scale as well which gets some extra reflections from the skybox which you can kind of see uh, but today i'm going to be talking about none of those things they are not of interest today we're going to be talking about actually simulating what light should be doing in the shadows which brings us to the live demo so the first thing you'll notice as we log in here is that everything looks a little bit different. You'll notice that uh, these shadows here, they seem a little bit more red than usual. And my character, if you look underneath, seems to also look a bit more red than usual. Why? Because we're standing on a red roof. So lots of light is bouncing off of the red roof, is bouncing onto this wall here, bouncing onto our character, whatever. And so we see it as red. What you'll then notice is the side of the house is very green because there's lots of green stuff all around. So of course it's going to look green. Now I did mention this is real time. So let's just change the color to, I don't know, orange. Now you can see the side of the house is orange, which looks a bit interesting. Or we can make it pink, right? And now the house is just bathed in pink. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to change it back to, what was it, dark green. There you go. So back to what we were before. And now we're going to head inside. And you can see inside is again properly dark. And this makes sense because there's far less light here. But what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to blow the ceiling open. So this is the fun bit. So you can see now that there's a hole in the ceiling, well now there's sunlight coming in, so the lighting is going to have to adapt in here. You might have noticed that on the wall over there, yes, right there, uh, there's a little bit more blue tinge. And you might have noticed on the floor here, there's a little bit more glow around where the sun is. And of course, 
as we can uh, with everything else. Let's select the floor and we'll change it to be orange. Now you see the room is a lot more orange, change it to bright green. There's a lot more bright green in the room now. Uh, but of course, let's just change it back to, I think it was baby blue, just like that. And now let's change the time of day. So we can make the sun go a bit more shallow in the sky like that. And have it bouncing off the wall over there. Or we can make it come from a different direction entirely. So we can make it come through the window. Or we can do something like that. And you can see all the lighting is updating in real time. I'm getting a solid 30 frames a second, which is actually nothing to scoff at for this kind of light simulation. Anyway, let's blow open the roof a ton more so we can properly show off how some of this lighting can make this room look. Uh, of course, we can move the sun around to the other side. You kind of get the idea by this point, right? So you notice the lighting here looks a lot more natural. Where is my character gone? Uh, okay, that doesn't matter, but you can see this lighting looks a lot more physically based. So you might be wondering, how on earth am I doing this in Roblox, an engine which is notoriously known for not having good lighting? Well, the answer is a lot of probes. So here are all the lighting probes that I'm using. These are basically just arranged on a regular grid throughout the level. And each one of these probes is calculating a little bit of lighting information and it's broadcasting it into the scene using a small point light. So every one of these probes has a unique color and that color is then emitted. So how do we calculate that color? Well, we solve the rendering equation. This infamous equation in computer graphics, which is really hard to solve because it involves some nasty integrals. Luckily, we have this technology called ray tracing, which allows us to shoot rays out and we can sample the color of different points in the scene just at single points and we can sort of average it all up we can collect a bunch of samples and then it more or less converges on the right answer so what i'm doing here is every single one of these points every single frame using a parallel luau actor it is shooting out a ray into the scene and it will hit something it'll hit any anything it'll just go off in a random direction so let's say this one just goes off over here onto this floor and so it hits the floor the next thing it does is it does a direct lighting check. So it will check, can this floor see the sun? If so, it will add the contribution of sunlight to that little area. So it will say, okay, so we can see the sun here. So we're contributing the sunlight color. Then what it will do is it will multiply it with the color of the material. In this case, it'll be baby blue. And it will then save it into an internal buffer. What it will do is it will then buffer 60 of those other rays that have been shot out on other frames. It will accumulate them over time and it will average them all out to get an average color. This average color then turns into the color that it emits from its point light. That's the overly simplified view of it. There is a little bit more going on to make it look a bit more consistent. Some things like, for example, making sure that it doesn't look super speckly or super bubbly. Um, but that's a general gist of what's going on here. So let's just... Oh, I killed myself. I hate it when that happens. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can see that the end result of all of those probes is a little bit laggy, but otherwise really pretty lighting. And I'm not on an RTX card or anything. This is a GTX 1660 that I'm running on, which I mean is better than most Roblox players, but it's not like specially designed for this kind of task. But yeah, that's basically my real time global illumination system. Um, so if you'd like to experiment with this, uh, maybe let me know, I might open source it. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is just a quick little experiment and yeah, it'd be really cool if Roblox got some official support for something like this, even if it was a little bit crappy, it would still be better than nothing. It'd be especially useful for designing interiors and stuff, which are currently really hard to get right with the traditional lighting. Anyway, I've been Eltob, I will see you guys next time, and have fun!